This video will provide an overview on the recommended best practices to be used when fueling liquefied natural gas vehicles. Due to the variety of vehicles, fueling station designs, and operating procedures, it's important that you receive additional training specific to the station and vehicle you'll be using. Natural gas, the same gas that may be used to heat your home or cook your food, is abundant and inexpensive and when burned as vehicle fuel, can provide lower emissions than its gasoline or diesel alternatives. Natural gas vehicles, or NGVs, are powered with compressed natural gas, also known as CNG, or liquefied natural gas, also known as LNG. LNG is natural gas that has been refrigerated and condensed into a liquid to maximize its energy density. LNG is stored at pressures less than 230 psi as compared to CNG which is stored at pressures up to 3600 psi. Refueling a vehicle with LNG is not difficult but there are more steps in the fueling process as compared to gasoline or diesel fueling. Following the station specific fueling instructions is critical to ensure compliance with local rules and regulations as well as your safety and the integrity of the equipment. When you arrive at an LNG fueling station, make a point of locating the key safety features before fueling. Identify the emergency shutdown devices or ESDs, the fire extinguishers, the emergency help telephone if provided, and the informational signs. The ESD button should terminate all station operations when pressed and the station should enter a safe mode to minimize potential hazards. In the event of an ESD activation, you'll notice audible and visible alarm warning devices such as warning lights and buzzers or horns. Activation of the ESD may or may not automatically notify first responders, so also use the emergency help phone if available or phone the posted emergency numbers. The emergency help telephone, where available, connects to live operators available 24-7 who will relay the information you provide to the appropriate responders. Use this phone when practical or phone the posted emergency numbers to report a fire, gas leak, equipment damage, or other conditions that present a hazard to people or property. Fire extinguishers are provided for your protection, but do not attempt to extinguish an LNG fire unless you have been specifically trained to do so or there is personal safety at risk. LNG stations are typically equipped with gas and flame detection systems that should automatically activate the ESD system when a gas leak or flame is detected. In the event of an emergency, you should push any emergency shutdown button if it can easily be reached and proceed to a safe location to call emergency responders. Always remember to ensure your own safety and the safety of others during an emergency. When possible, do not leave the station in an unsafe condition that may be hazardous to the next user. Report any problems and wait for instructions to ensure the station is rendered safe prior to your departure. Read and comply with the safety signs, including posted fueling instructions each time you fuel your NGV. We will now review the key steps in the LNG refueling process. If your LNG vehicle tank is empty because the vehicle is new or has been sitting for more than two to three weeks, then the inner tank is considered to be warm or hot relative to its normal cryogenic temperature and may need to be filled in five to 10 gallon increments. Follow the LNG tank manufacturer procedures for filling of warm or hot LNG tanks. Upon arriving at the LNG station, park your vehicle in the fueling area and turn the ignition off. Potential ignition sources such as in-use cell phones and cigarettes are not permitted at the LNG station. Turn off your cell phone and do not smoke. The next step is to put on your personal protective equipment or PPE. Typical PPE includes face shield and glasses, an anti-static flame retardant long sleeve coat, loose fitting cryogenic approved gloves, long pants and leather boots. Your safety professional should specify your PPE requirements and each LNG station may have additional requirements so inquire if you're not certain. LNG is a cryogenic fuel which is stored at temperatures near minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 160 degrees Celsius. As a result, the LNG fuel nozzle, exposed vehicle tank piping, and exposed station piping can be extremely cold. 
Exposure or contact with these surfaces can cause freeze burns to expose skin. LNG fuel systems are designed not to leak, but a component failure could result in a leak. If a leak is detected, report the problem immediately and activate the ESD if necessary. It's now time to begin fueling your vehicle. Be sure to lower your face shield. Connect the ground cable from the LNG station to an exposed metal part on the vehicle fuel tank. Your LNG vehicle fuel system supplier should provide you with an approved connection point. For instance, Westport LNG vehicle tanks are equipped with a grounding lug. This is an important step as static electricity could cause a spark which could possibly ignite the natural gas vapor. Check the vehicle LNG tank pressure. Tank pressure is a measure of the pressure of the natural gas vapor inside the tank but has no correlation to the amount of LNG inside the tank. If the pressure in the vehicle tank exceeds the station pumping capacity, the tank must be vented to an acceptable pressure before fueling may begin. Consult the station operator manual and your vehicle's LNG system operator manual for the appropriate tank venting procedures. Venting procedures are dependent on the type of vehicle you have, as well as the local rules and regulations. Check with your specific fueling station to ensure you are using the best method for your situation. There are two forms of venting, venting excess vapor back to the station, or venting to atmosphere. Venting excess vapor back to the station is a preferred method as venting to atmosphere promotes fuel loss and is harmful to the environment. Some vehicle fuel systems are equipped with a vent receptacle to vent excess tank pressure to the LNG station through a vent hose provided at the station. Connect the vent hose to the vehicle's vent receptacle. Open the tank vent valve and allow pressure to equalize between the vehicle tank and station. Westport LNG trucks are equipped with a vent to station valve which allows excess vapor to be vented safely back to the station via the station fueling hose. The fueling hose must be connected to the tank in order to use this valve. Open the LNG tank shroud cover and locate the manual valve marked vent to STN, vent to station, and open it. You should now be hearing the vapor from your vehicle tank moving back to the station. This will be indicated by the falling pressure on your tank's pressure gauge. Close the vent valve once the tank pressure has sufficiently dropped and return the vent hose to the station if venting back to the station. If your station does not allow excess vapor to be returned to the station, please consult with your station operator for the proper venting procedures for that site. Whenever you open valves, it's good practice to open them all the way and then close one quarter turn. This prevents over-tightening of the valve seat in the fully open position. All vent valves must be closed before fueling can begin. A cold fueling hose will aid in the fueling process. If the fueling hose appears frosty and cold, it's likely ready for use. If the hose is not frosty, it may require a pre-cooling prior to vehicle fueling. Check the station operating manual for further guidance as pre-cooling procedures vary between stations. Remove the fueling nozzle from the dispenser and look for any obvious damage that may have been caused by previous users. Remove the dust caps and inspect the vehicle's receptacle to see that it's clean and the receptacle does not look damaged. Use compressed air to remove any moisture or dirt that may reside on the nozzle or the receptacle. Moisture and dirt can cause premature wear of the equipment or leaks. Connect the nozzle to the LNG tank receptacle and slowly push the handles toward the vehicle. Ensure a secure connection is made by gently pulling on the nozzle. Once the tank venting is complete and the nozzle is connected to the vehicle, proceed to the station's fuel management system to authorize the dispenser. Follow the fuel provider's instructions on using the fuel management system. Once the fuel management system is authorized fueling, Return to the dispenser and press the start button. Fueling will terminate automatically when the tank is full. Always monitor fueling and press the stop button if your vehicle is not properly accepting fuel. Additional venting may be required if the vehicle's LNG tank pressure becomes too high during fueling. 
If additional venting is required, remember to close the vent valves before attempting to fuel again. When fueling has stopped and it appears your tank is full, slowly disconnect the nozzle and allow the residual gas to vent. Quickly removing the nozzle will damage the internal seals and may cause leaks. The fueling nozzle handles have three positions. The handles pushed in toward the vehicle will provide a sealed and locked position. Pull the handles halfway toward the fueler and internal gas pressure will be released but the nozzle is still connected. Pull the handles all the way out toward the fueler and the nozzle will release from the vehicle. If moisture or rain causes the nozzle to stick to the vehicle receptacle, apply the icer solution to the nozzle, if available, and wait several minutes for the ice to thaw. Do not force or jar the nozzle off the receptacle, as costly damage will occur. On vehicles equipped with multiple tanks, each tank may need to be filled separately. When all tanks have been filled, return the nozzle to the dispenser and disconnect the station ground cable and secure the station prior to departing. Finally, before starting your vehicle, again check to make sure that the nozzle has been removed and is safely stowed. Confirm the tank dust cap has been installed and that no leaks have been initiated on your vehicle or the LNG station. To recap the fueling procedure, remember these main steps. Identify station emergency shutdown buttons, emergency telephone location, and read all signage and posted instructions. Park truck in appropriate position and shut off engine. Always wear your personal protective equipment. Connect the grounding cable to the grounding lug. If necessary, vent LNG tank pressure. Pre-cool LNG fuel hose if necessary. This may not be necessary for Westport vehicles. Clean receptacle with compressed air. Connect the fueling hose to the tank to be fueled. If necessary, open vent to station valve for Westport LNG tanks. When pressure has equalized with station pressure, close vent valve. Press the station dispenser start button. Monitor station flow meter. Disconnect hose and store in appropriate location. Disconnect the grounding cable. Remove personal protective equipment and re-enter your vehicle. As you can see, LNG fueling can be safe and easy when you're knowledgeable about the equipment and the proper process. While this video has introduced you to the basics of LNG refueling, it's recommended that you receive additional training that is tailored to your vehicle and the specific LNG station you'll be using. Contact your fleet manager, fuel provider, or vehicle provider for more information. Thanks for your attention, stay safe, and good luck.